Welcome to another video with Joseph Manifesting. Today's video is going to be on how to ma manifest your specific person. I'm just kidding. I've had about five of these videos within the last month. They are very detailed. They include how I manifest for my wife as well as important structure to follow and techniques I use. If you're interested in that, please do check that out after this video. Today's video is going to be on how I manifested $102,111.11. Before I go into today's video, please do like, subscribe, share. The more that this information is shared, the more that the people that need this can find it. If you are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, please do check out my detail page, shoot me an email. I'll be happy to work with you. How I manifested $102,111.11 and also why that number? I too used to be a person that was into astrology and numerology. And to me, whenever I saw numbers, it meant X, Y, and Z. Also, the thing was, too, up until that point, I manifested about $500 to $1,000 here and there. But I was wondering whether or not, well, was this me or was this like outside things or et cetera? I had many successes with the law. For whatever reason, in this specific area with money, there was a block. And so to me, this would be a definite, I am the creator across all aspects of my life. So when this desire came to me, I would do quick little visualizations throughout my day. I decided that my scene was going to be this. I would see a quick little scene of me seeing my hands. I'd see my tattoos and my fingers and et cetera. And I would have the vision I would have if I did it in real life. So I would pick up my phone. I would go on to my bank. I would click the bank app. I would see where it says, hey, log in, use your face ID. I'd see the little thing to the face ID. And then I'd go over to account balance. Then I would, what I would see is a very large deposit and then I would see my total balance, $102,111.11. What I was shooting for is the feeling behind this. Now, the feeling, and this is always mixed up. You'll hear emotions, and then you'll hear feeling, and et cetera. Now, I do think it is a combination of both. However, to me, the primary thing is the feeling that something is so. Now, there's always questions of, well, what's the difference between daydreaming, and what's the difference between feeling it real? Daydreaming is... It would be nice one day if there is no intention of it being real. I don't believe that it's possible for me. It's just fun to entertain. And from that, I will have emotions of fun. Imagining going to Italy. I'm like, oh, that would be nice, right? That's not feeling it real. What feeling it real is for me, the difference is, is using my senses with as much detail as possible. And I believe this is why Neville shared using your senses and touch primarily for me. It's because the more that I can feel it real, the more that I can see myself actually there, more that I can accept the fact that it is true. That's why he always talks about filling up your consciousness completely with just this idea or this scene. He talks about the looping, where you loop it over and over and over again. He talks about the affirmations, where you see the affirmation over and over and over again, the lullaby. lullaby. I don't know if I said that word right. It sounded weird. That method over and over again, because it fills your consciousness with a single idea until you feel satisfied, until you feel different. That's how you know you succeeded in prayer, is when you come out of prayer, do you feel different? Do you feel like what you before wanted, you now have? If so, you prayed successfully. A lot of the times what will end up happening is we will have a desire to have a certain thing. We'll imagine, we'll affirm, we'll do whatever it is. And then later, we'll go back to the old state. Now, here's the thing. We have our dwelling place. And our dwelling place is a place that we return to automatically. We've been there so many times that now we've just embodied that state and it's natural to us. So as we're embodying these new states, we may switch between the old state and the new state. Now, when we're in the old state, what we want to do is become aware of the fact that we are in the old state or the old man or the old programming is coming up. So when the old thoughts that come up of, I can't have this, or I tried to do this with money before, or there's this situation, or I'm unable to do it for this. I try to do it a thousand times, etc. This is all the old man. This is the thinking that keeps you stuck in the old state. Recognize it for what it is. It is simply a program. It is something that you once identified with, and it only has power because you identified with it. Now what we want to do is disidentify from it. When those thoughts come up, be aware of them immediately. When I start having this programming that's coming up, I go, ah, these are all thoughts and thought patterns that are happening in my mind. And then I'll ask myself a question. Well, what is it that I would like to think? What is it that I would like to feel? What is it that I'd like to experience? And this is a very important thing because it changes my perspective. It changes my state of consciousness. And most importantly, it kills the old man. 
I am no longer becoming aware of it. I am no longer fighting it. I'm no longer fearing it. I'm no longer giving it any power. I am aware that it was there. It had power because I gave it it. I no longer choose it. This is what I choose. And so then I would go back into my vision of me logging into my bank, of me seeing the face ID. I would see myself holding my phone. I would see the deposit for that large sum of money and my available balance for the amount that I told you that I manifest. I also did this before I went to bed. I would again, on a loop, see myself logging in, going over to account balance, using my senses, holding my phone, seeing what I would see, experiencing what I would experience if it was now true until it filled my consciousness and I would fall off to sleep in this. Again, throughout the day, I would then come back to my sense of saying, I don't see the $102,000. You've never manifested this amount of money. This is a very large sum of money for you. I've most money I ever had at that point prior to that was probably $10,000 or something like this. So 102,000 was a lot of money to me. And I realized this was all old thought patterns of the old man. And I stayed loyal to my assumption. I stayed loyal to my state. I would again, when the thought patterns came up, disidentified from them. If there was any type of emotional or limited beliefs that came up in the body, I would simply sit there and I would observe them. I would pay attention to where in my body do I feel any type of disturbance? Where in my body do I feel tension? This is the limited belief or the emotion that's causing these thought patterns that's keeping me connected to the old man. So I would observe them. And then a wonderful thing happens is I observe the sensation wherever it's at in the body. After some time, it ends up releasing from the body. Once that belief or that limited, that, that trauma or whatever it is releases from the body, those thought patterns then start to dissipate. I don't have them anymore. And a little by little, I catch myself shifting from the old state to the new state. Now, the whole reason why I wanted the money is the same reason why anybody wants anything, because the feeling that it gave me, the feeling of satisfaction, the feeling of freedom, the feeling of, of feeling accomplished, feeling satisfied. These are all wonderful feelings that I have. Now, as a byproduct, I did feel some emotions of gratitude. I felt some emotions of love, et cetera. But the emotion is secondary. The primary thing I'm looking for is the satisfaction of itself, is the, the freedom, the, the, the relief. That's what I'm really going for, the acceptance that it is so. And again, if you've been practicing this for a while, you can simply just do affirmations, do the lullaby, lullaby method. And until it fills up your consciousness with those thoughts, then you feel satisfied. Or you can do a visualization to where you can just see it on a loop over and over again until you feel satisfied. The gauge of if you were doing it correctly is, do you feel different after you're done with your prayer? Do you feel like you now have what before you desired after your prayer? So I did this night after night for close to about two months or so, roughly. I don't remember the exact time frame, but it was about two, three months, somewhere around there. And a series of events started to happen. Now, to me, they were all events that had nothing to do with, with receiving money. Money wasn't coming to my life from random places. In fact, money was starting to look like it was coming out of my bank account. And so again, I would just disidentify from what my inner suggestions were about what was happening. I would go back to my ideal and I wash and repeat it over and over and over again until I noticed an interesting thing. My 3D wasn't changing. However, my inner state did. I kept giving myself the money. I kept giving myself the feeling. And the reason why the feeling is the secret is because after I embody the feeling, I formed the belief that I now have that money. So the 3D may not change immediately. In fact, it didn't change immediately. It went the opposite way. But I no longer reacted the same way that I used to. I no longer was desiring money or worrying about money or doing the normal things that happened when I didn't feel as though I had the money. A series of events ended up happening from here. My dad had bipolar and schizophrenia. And for about 20 years, he's been struggling with it. It's, it has really took over his life. It was a tragic thing for him. He had lots of paranoia. He had voices in the head all the time that were haunting him. He was in and out of hospitals for 20 years. On one of his attacks, he almost took my mom's life. On another one of his attacks, he almost had, uh, took my brother's life. There was many traumatic things that happened as a result of this. And I realized that he always had very much shame and guilt about it because he never wanted to talk about it. He never discussed it. He always said he was fine. Whenever he took his medicine, he called it vitamins. That to him was his way of justifying what was going through. It's right around Christmas time, right? It's like December 20th or so roughly. 
and he wasn't taking his medication again. He ended up getting pulled over by the cops. They impounded him his truck. He went, got put into a mental hospital. You know, the, the normal thing that was happening for him. And he ended up getting COVID while, he, while he's in there as well. I'm contacting him, making sure he's okay. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know, everything's okay here. He's gone through this probably about 150 times. He's going to be okay. Well, one day he gives me a call and says, hey, Joseph, I'm, I'm really having a hard time. And I'm like, I've never heard him admit this in his whole entire life. So I'm, I'm going to help him. So I talk to the, the nurse and I'm like, hey, you cannot let him out of the house or you cannot let him out of the hospital. He is, he never asked for help. He asked me for help. He definitely needs help. Nothing. Call about 20 times and tell them. They're like, no, no, no. The psychologist says he's fine. And I'm like, I can assure you he's not fine. They end up releasing him from the hospital. So he's going home. He's not mentally stabilized. He's only in there for about five days. And usually this medication takes him about a month for it to stabilize. And they send him home after five days of treatment. I come and see him on Christmas Eve. I had a bunch of stuff going on in the 3D at that time. So, you know, I was doing my best to manage that and manage other things and kids and et cetera. And I stop by, I give him some, you know, he asked me for some use snacks and drop it off at his house. I give him a phone and et cetera so he can make contact because his other phone was in the truck, et cetera. He tries to give me a phone call on Christmas and, and I wasn't able to answer. I was doing something. I don't remember one of the happened at the time. I try giving him a call back later, don't hear from him. 26, give him a couple calls, don't hear from him. 27, give him a couple calls, don't hear from him. But on the 28th, I go over to his house. I have the key to the house. And so I'm like, I'll just go in and, and check on him. Well, there's a lock on the inside, a chain on the inside, so I can unlock the door, but the chain stopped me from opening it. I'm like, well, that's interesting. I don't know how he could have went somewhere if the front door is locked. Maybe he went out through the side. So I go on the side doors. They're all locked. I go back to the front, and I notice that the, there's like this big window that was there and there was a huge brick that was thrown at it it was cracked and i'm like oh my goodness so i call the cops i'm like hope he's okay cops end up getting in and he ended up leaving this earth he decided that he couldn't stand what he was experiencing anymore i believe that he just had a bunch of a bunch of hurt and shame of what it was that he was experiencing which which absolutely breaks my heart because i love the man of death and he uh decided to leave now what ended up happening after that was i received $50,000 from his life insurance. I received $50,000 from his retirement. And I received $2,111.11 from a checking account. Um, I split half with my brother who was the beneficiary. I looked into my bank account and the amount of money I had, $102,111.11. Now, the thing about the law is, is that we don't get to control any of the how that it ends up happening. Although I do suggest with this experience that to me, I always include that it is mutually beneficial. I always include that it's filled with integrity. I always include that everybody involved it's beneficial for. And I highly suggest that when manifesting money, if you have an affirmation, including that in there, there is the affirmation that Neville always suggests by a doctor. Um, I have a lab of steady dependable, dependable, dependable income filled with integrity and mutual benefit. That was his affirmation that he did. And he ended up having that to where he experienced a bunch of money. He ended up experiencing to where uh, it was mutually beneficial for everybody else. To recap, what I did was I would continue to visualize myself and see myself with the money. I would take the actions in my mind's eye that I would take if I experienced it in the 3D. I would see myself holding my phone. I would see myself accessing with my phone ID with my face ID. I would see myself going over to the bank app. I would see myself opening the bank app and the face ID happening. Then I would see myself going to accounts, touching. I was using my senses. I was using my sight. And then I would see myself opening up my account and having that amount of funds in there. Anytime the old man came up, I was completely aware of the fact that the old man was coming up and it was old programming. I would disidentify from it and go back to my ideal. If at any point I did have any type of sensations or any type of limited beliefs that were, were triggered as a response of the old man thoughts, I would disidentify from the thoughts saying that that's what was causing the emotion and realizing that the emotion, the limited belief was always there in causing the thoughts. And so I would observe the emotion wherever it was at and I would just simply identify or not identify, I would simply disidentify and observe the emotion. I would remind myself, I'm the consciousness. I have a mind and I have a body for this 3D experience. I am not my mind. I am not my body. 
I am the awareness. And right now there's an emotion or a sensation in the body. And I give myself permission to feel it. What you'll find is as you release this, this sensation or you release this emotion, those thoughts will stop popping up for you. You'll stop experiencing those things. Over time, you will shift from the old state to the new state. You'll shift from lack and the old man thinking, if I can't do this, it's always this, etc., to I'm abundant. I feel how I desire to feel. I have this amount of money and occupying that state. Again, we want to go shoot forward the feeling of satisfaction, the feeling of freedom, the feeling of relief, or the feeling that it is so. The more that we embody this, the more that the belief is formed through the feeling, because remember, the medium between the conscious and the subconscious is feeling. Words, the reason why we want to control words is because words have certain meaning to us that give us a certain feeling, and if it's unideal, we will be creating unideal circumstances outside of us. So that's why thoughts are important, but you can see from the affirmation, isn't it wonderful? Thank you that everything is ideal for me. These thoughts are not specific, yet the feeling they produce when I surrender to it is specific and it takes care of all my manifestations outside of me. So you see, the feeling is the master key and that's how we pray successfully. When I pray, believe I have received, parentheses, feel I have received and I shall. I hope today's video was helpful, guys. If you liked it, again, please like, subscribe, and share. Comment. I love hearing from you guys. Take care.